Hello, my name is Nazir Khan from the Faculty of Civil Engineering Technology and I will be demonstrating for you the solving of four reactant force for this particular structure. Before we get into solving, we should recognize a few things about the structure. We have a linear varying UDL or uniformly distributed load on the left hand side here. We'll need to basically calculate a point load, put it through the centroid of this shape and the magnitude of that point load will equal to the area of the shape. The area of the horizontal component here is given by 8 kilonewton per meter and the vertical component will be given by the height which is 2 plus 2 which will give you this entire height here. If I were to calculate the area of a triangle it's base times height divided by 2 so what I have is 8 times 4 is 32 divided by 2 will give you 16. I have to put that point load through the centroid of this particular triangle and the centroid happens one-third in each direction from the right angle. The right angle is right there. One-third of the height because this is it will be a horizontal force will be one-third of 4 which is uh, 4 times 3 is 12 1.33 1.33 will be the height from the base to that force. Okay, We know the force will be 16. The other thing that we have to recognize is that we have a pulley. On The cable on each side of a pulley has the same tension in it. And therefore, when I convert this mass into a force, the force will be the same here and here. Okay, We also have a hinge or pin joint right at this location. It is used to take apart the structure and create a, one, two new FBDs. We're going to create one of the left hand side, one of the right hand side. The most important thing and that will create four reactant forces are these pin support right here. These supports. Each one, when we create an FBD, we're going to replace each one of these support with a horizontal and vertical force. And that's why this is a, has four reactant forces. When you replace supports, you replace them with reactant forces. That's about, uh, about it for this. Uh, we know how to, to convert a mass into a force. You multiply by 9.81 meter per second squared will give you newtons. If you want to change it to kilonewton, we divide by a thousand. So this will turn out to be 9.81 meters or 9.81 kilonewtons. The equations that we're going to use to solve for the reactant forces, there are three equilibrium equations that we'll use. Summation moment is equal to zero and counterclockwise rotation about the point of application will be considered to be positive. Summation forces in the x direction, all forces acting in the x direction has to equal out to zero for equilibrium to happen and to the right forces acting to the right will be positive and likewise in the vertical direction summation forces in the y direction is equal to zero forces acting up will be considered to be positive okay suggested procedure for solving for reactant forces the one the first one is uh, draw an FBD of the entire structure Okay, cut it away from its support, replace the support with the appropriate number of reactant forces. Solve for as many reactant forces as possible with the structure intact. Before you take it apart, solve for what you can with the structure intact. The next thing that you have to do, take the structure apart at the pin or hinge joint and replace the pin with the two forces, one horizontal, one vertical. Okay, perform moments at the pin or hinge joint and solve for one reactant force. Once you have done that, you go back to the entire FBD, the, the FBD of the entire structure, and solve for the remaining or the last reactant force. We're going to go through this procedure. Let's go and create the FBD. This is the original structure that we had. And of course, we notice that I've changed this into a force rather than a mass. I've taken the 1,000 kilograms multiplied by 9.81 meter per second squared 
that will give me newtons divided by 1000 will give me kilonewton which brings me back to 9.81 kilonewton we have to recognize that we have a vertical angle here and the component of that needs to be solved for it for us to do our calculations when we look at uh, the the component for the vertical one it will be cos and you're using vertical angle this one will be cos the trig uh, the trig uh, value will have to be cos so I'm going to take um, cos of 35 multiplied by 9.81 and I'll get a number for that component the vertical component likewise the horizontal will be the sine function okay 35 sine times 9.81 will give me that component also I'm going to change this to an FBD so I have to replace these supports with forces I have to label the FBD it has to have a label I'm going to convert the UDL to its point load we know that that magnitude right there is equal to the area of the shape one-third from the from the base in this case I've replaced this support with two for reactant forces one in the X direction one in the Y direction I have converted this particular force this angular force here which has a magnitude of 9.81 kilonewton into its components we have uh, for the horizontal 5.63 kilonewton for the vertical 8.04 kilonewton okay if you run these through Pythagoras theorem you will get back this number and keep in mind that it doesn't have to be exact because we've cut off these at three sig figs when we look at uh, what we've done over here again the same that we've done on the left hand side we replace that support with a horizontal and vertical reactant force now anytime that we don't have a magnitude for a force we have to have a label see these are labels and we've made the assumption that these reactant forces are acting with this sense okay with a vertical sense of up with a horizontal sense to the right we've made the assumption and likewise over here if our calculations for the magnitude of any one of these force happen to be a minus then our assumption is incorrect okay so that's it that's we, we have a FBD of the entire structure the second point uh, on the procedure is to go and solve for what you can with the entire structure intact we're not taking it apart yet right we're gonna try and solve if I were to do moments at this point anytime that you have a force going through the point of application it doesn't create a moment so right off the bat I know that this force won't create a, a moment this one won't create a moment and the line of action of this horizontal force also goes through point A so this one won't create a moment if I do moment I'm gonna get one moment two moment three moment four moment and five moment so I should have five terms in my equation not only that I'm gonna have one unknown and this will be the unknown anytime that you have an equation with one unknown the equation could be solved okay if you have two unknowns you have to use uh, certain other techniques such as substitution method in other subject we have used uh, addition and subtraction graphical methods and so on but we are going to be taking the structure apart we won't be using any one of the mentioned uh, method other than taking the structure apart for these uh, structures When we look at the FBD, we're going to go and perform the necessary calculation to solve what we can, all whatever reactant we can. And in this case, if I were to do moments at this location, I will be able to solve for BY because this unknown, that unknown, that unknown will not, will not create a moment. So we have a moment formula or a moment equation with one unknown, and that is the unknown right there. Let's go and perform moments. We have uh, 16 times 1.33, which is this force. And it is going in the negative rotation. It is happening to have a negative rotation. As you can see, our formula say counterclockwise will be positive. So I have to have that negative sign right in front there. This is a sign convention that we're using. Okay. The next force that will create a moment is the 25 times the distance of 1. 
Again, it is going clockwise, it will be negative, minus 25 times 1. That is the second term. We know that we're going to have five uh, terms. Terms are separated by minus and plus sign, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Let's go and uh, find the moment for this guy right here. Okay, This one will be going counterclockwise, rotation will be counterclockwise, which is positive. So we know we're going to have a positive in front of this. The perpendicular distance from the point of application, that distance to that line of action, will be 2, right there. So we have 2 times 5.63 kilonewtons will go positive. And that is positive 5.63 times 2. Okay, Let's go and do the vertical. We have 8.04 times this particular distance all the way here. That distance is given by 1 plus 6 is 7. And what rotation do we have? We have a negative rotation. So we have minus the magnitude of the force times 7. And the last moment that we're going to create is the moment by by. Okay? This will rotate counterclockwise, which means that it will be positive. The perpendicular distance to the line of action will be 6 plus 1 is 7 plus 4 is 11. So we will have plus 11 by, and that term is right there. When we crunch the numbers, we'll come out with 8.3 kilonewton acting up. It is a positive number, means that our assumption of this force acting up is correct. Okay. So now we know this force. When we look in the vertical direction, we have that. That is known. Those two are known. This one is not known. This one is now known because we just solved for it right there. We could go and do summation forces in the y direction because we only have one unknown in the vertical direction. We've solved for this. Everything else is known. Okay, let's go and set up that equation. Summation forces in the y direction is equal to zero. Positive is up. Okay, we know that a y we assume that it is going up, so we placed it as a positive. This force is going down, 25 going down, and we have this force here going down, so we have 8.0 force going down, we have by going up, we know that we've solved for by right there, and that is a positive. Crunch the numbers again, you have 24, 74 kilonewton acting up. Again, we have a positive, we've made the right assumption. If we had a negative, we would have to go and change the sense of that particular force. When we look at this, we cannot solve anything. If we go into do summation forces in the x direction, in the x direction, we would have two unknowns. And that's that's the real difficulty about this problem. When you come to this point, you have to take apart the structure at the pin and draw the FBD of one of the uh, one of the parts of this structure. One of the parts of this structure. I'm gonna draw the FBD of the right hand side. Okay. And that FBD looks like this. We've taken apart the structure. We have all the forces. But remember, we have to replace that, that pin with two reactant forces. Okay, And those two reactant forces would be CX and CY. Okay, If I were to now take moments about this location here, I will eliminate the maximum amount of unknown forces. So if I did moments at this location, I will have one unknown force and I could solve that. Anytime I have an equation with one unknown, I could solve it. We're going to have moments at this location here. It's going to take us in the clockwise direction, clockwise direction, so it'll be a minus 5.63 times a distance of 2 to the point of application. This is the horizontal force creating a moment, right? The vertical force, if you extend the line of action, it'll go through the point of application, so that will not create a moment. So we don't have to worry about this force. The next one that we're going to look at is uh, this one here, the vertical component at point B, 8.3 kilonewton, the perpendicular distance is 4, 
it will be rotating in a positive direction and that is the term that we have right there 8.3 times 4 we have one more force that will create a moment and that force is right there bx and when we look at our um, perpendicular dis distance for bx it'll be 2 plus 2 the line of action is right here so we're going to have a negative rotation so we're going to have a minus 4 bx we could crunch the numbers and solve for bx and bx is equal to 5.49 kilonewton acting to the left and that is also the correct assumption okay once we have that once we have that we could go back to the original structure we could go back to the original structure remember we used uh, summation moments summation forces in the y direction for the entire structure the only one that we didn't use is summation forces in the x direction now if I've placed that uh, 5.49 for BX, I only have one unknown now going horizontally. And I could solve that with the one remaining equation that I did not use for the entire structure. And when we set this up, summation forces in the X direction is equal to zero. We have 16 going in the positive direction. We have 5.63 going in the negative direction. We have 5.49 going in negative direction and they're all listed there and AX going also in the negative direction. Solve for AX you'll have 4.89 kilonewton acting to the left and again we have a positive number it means that our assumption or the sense of AX was correct and now as you could see we have all of the forces solved for Okay, all of the reactant forces, all four of them have a number they're solved for. And that is the typical method that you would have to use to solve four reactant forces. We have three equations, so we can't go ahead and just solve it like, like if we have enough equations to solve uh, four. We only have three. We have to take the structure apart and look at this side. Once we have the horizontal, we go back to the entire structure and solve for the last one. I hope that this video helps with your uh, learning and provide you with an understanding of how these type of problems are solved. Thank you. Bye-bye.